Hey guys, from Bludgeon95, recording live from the Wilker County Prison Cell. So, this is another fight just because I have free time now. Um, so this, this is one that I think I, I played around with a few ideas of a few people going against each other, but I think this one was probably the best one to do. And that's, um, Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen and... Silver Surfer from Marvel. Um, so, right off the bat, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, Dr. Manhattan would, you know, can't literally beats everyone, he's blah, 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 he's beat Superman, he beat this guy, he beat that guy. <sighs> I'm not going to sit here and, oh, you should put him against Galactus, you should put him against, like, the literal fucking, you know, actual god or something. Like, that's not... You have to actually, like, humor the idea of a fight if it's one-sided. You have to actually, like, let a fight, let both characters be, like, explained. Um, if you think a fight is one-sided, you can't just say... Because, again, you know, I've said this before, a lot of people seem to think that certain characters are more powerful than they really would be just off of the basis of, like, it's presented that way. People think that... There are people think that Bleach characters can one-shot DBZ characters. People think that Yu Yu Hakusho characters can one-shot Bleach characters. Like, that's not, that's not how that works. You can't, you know, because of the way it's animated or because this character, because of something in the show, like, that's not how it works. Um, Dr. Manhattan, I think, is one of those cases where there's a, yes, he is, you know, a, a godlike being. And there are a lot of characters that are like him that I think he's comparable to, but I don't think he's necessarily above any of those characters. Like, I don't think he's, you know, necessarily above, like, the Spectre or the Living Tribunal or Alien X or, you know, anything like that. So, the way, even though I think he did fight the Spectre, but let's not get into that. Um, so let's start with Dr. Manhattan. So, he... I'm not going to pretend to know all the science behind this shit, but, um, essentially, he is, like, he's just living energy, I suppose is a good way to put it. He's living, like, molecular energy. Um, he's able to synthesize atoms, you know, and, and basically produce various forms of energy. He's able to, you know read energy, he's nearly omnipotent, omnipresent, all-knowing, uh, I wouldn't say all-powerful necessarily, but to a degree, kind of, um, he has limited versions of these act, of these abilities, right, so, for instance, he can't, so, one thing is that he does not have a corporeal sense of time, anymore, right? He, he, or a living, or a, sorry, he has a corporeal sense of time, not a linear sense of time, right? He does not, he, his consciousness basically lives in the past, present, and future simultaneously. So he is able to, he is able to kind of, you know, so in, in a sense, he's able to like, not really time travel. I mean, he can time travel, but that's not how he necessarily does it. But, however, in depending on the incarnation you use, sometimes that's, like, absolute. Like, he has complete knowledge of everything that will happen, everything that has happened, everything, right? In some cases, um, you know, he's gone back to, like, the, the dawn of time, and he's learned it all manually. And in some cases, it's just, like, limited to himself. Like, you know... Uh, he can only see his own future and his own past, but he can't see, like, events beyond that. He just, you know, so that really, uh, depends, you know. And then you've had characters like Doctor Doom and shit who have done that, too. Who have gone to the, you know, traveled back in time and then waited. You know what I mean? So, if you're gonna say that Doctor Manhattan has to be able to do that, well, you know then you're saying that Doctor Doom is on an equivalent level for that sort of thing. Um, so, he, speaking of Doctor Doom being able to replicate magic and technology, 
Dr. Manhattan uh, being able to basically recreate any form of energy, whether it be quantum energy, uh, ambient energy, nuclear energy, you know, what have you. He's also been able to read and identify magical energy and reproduce magic, right? So like Zatanna and Ex Etrigan would be, you know, using spells against him and he was able to actually mimic those spells just by saying like, okay, I don't know how magic works, at least not in the way that you do, but I am able to read the energy signature of the magic that you're using and by matching that energy signature and seeing its flow and everything, I can recreate your movements based off of how you're able to do them. Um, so he doesn't really obtain an understanding of magic uh, or its properties, but he does kind of, he is able to replicate it in terms of specific things that he's seen. Um, so essentially, with his actual abilities, you know, basically untouchable in terms of, uh, you know, he can become intangible, he can even attack other intangible beings, like the Martian Manhunter, he's been able to, um, he's been able to basically just be, be impervious to certain things, uh, more or less all-powerful, because he's got things like, you know, like, molecular manipulation, you know, like, controlling matter, things like that, that's, once you get into that territory, you can pretty much do whatever you want, you know, manipulation of time, space, all that stuff. Um, the only real weakness he has that I'm familiar with is, uh, tachyon particles, which is a very specific weakness to have for such an all-consuming spectral character, you know, for it's like, this character can do literally everything, anything, but tachyon particles, which are, like, common you know what I mean? It's not like this rare, it's not like Superman where it's like this rare rock that only exists because his planet blew up. It's like, it, no, it's like tachyon particles are just like a cosmic, they, they happen, you know? So, so it's like, that's just, I don't understand. <laughs> that's kind of weird that he, anyway, so like tachyon based radiation, tachyon, uh, tachyon beams were used against him to, to weaken him. Um, it's not that he's necessarily weak to them, like he dies if he's hit by them. But it's more so the fact that, like, he doesn't... It, it's the same with Superman and magic. Like, he's not weak to magic, he's vulnerable to magic, right? He doesn't die if he's hit by magic. He's just... He has no more defense against it than, like, anyone else. Um. So, yeah. Silver, uh, Dr. Manhattan has no specific defenses against... He has no way to really defend himself against tachyon-based uh, attacks, right? Um, I'm kind of short-selling him here a little bit, because, I mean, I, the character can, in theory, do, like, whatever. I mean, I don't want to say that, oh, he'll beat anyone because he can just make that person not exist, or, you know, I'm, I'm not into cheap shit like that. Um... Or it's like, he can just make the, you can just take the person's power away, or he can just do this, or he can just do that. That's not how that, I don't think that's how that works. Um, but, yeah, so he can theoretically do, I don't want to say anything, but Dr. Manhattan can theoretically do pretty much anything. Like, so, when you're dealing with characters like this, and Silver Surfer is very similar, just, just heads up, I'm not going to be very... Uh, you know, particular about my analysis of Silver Surfer. Um, because the power, when you have powers that aren't very clearly defined, and you have powers that are basically, like, whatever they need to be, not, like, levels of power, but, like, when you literally don't know what the person's fucking powers are, and, like, you can't, they can't, you know, they can just say, I have this power now, that becomes a little tricky to do a fight with them. So, um... Yeah, so Silver Surfer, like I said, same vein pretty much as Dr. Manhattan, um, made a ha made a Herald of Galactus, um, and by so was coded in the, I think it's called the, the it has, it has no official name, but the metal that now incorporates his body and the, and the, and the board, um, are essentially, 
it, it's called the Galactic Glaze. It's not the actual name for it, but it's just like that's what it's referred to as. Um, we know that he has been, we know that uh, the Silver Surfer has been fast enough to, um, what was it? He's, he's ridden across, you know, the surface of suns. He's been fast enough to like travel from one end of the galaxy to the other in short periods of time. So we know he's, you know, that level of speed. Um, he's, and particularly like he also has, you know, molecular manipulation, ma you know, control over matter, limited control over space and time. He has the power cosmic, which again is pretty much just a vague fucking whatever it needs to be kind of power. It doesn't really do anything, but it makes me more powerful. You know, it's the star hearts or the, the fucking new type or the, you know, whatever you want to call. It. It's one of those powers where it's like, there's no real explanation for it, but it does something. Um, so it was grand being a herald of Galactus. It was granted to him. Um, so he only has a, you know, a small fraction of Galactus's total power, which is, more or less infinite, but not really, because, like, he's been beaten by people with finite power, and he has the limitation of the cosmic hunger, which Silver Surfer doesn't, by the way. Um, but yeah, the cosmic, the power cosmic essentially lets him, you know, it, it like I said, limited control over space and time and matter and all of that, gravity to an extent, but also, uh, Particularly, the thing he excels at is energy manipulation and develop, you know, creation and absorption and things like that. So, with what I would pretty much use, which is more like a Galactus ability, you know, like the other heralds have like a specific element that they focus on, but th this guy's more like, you know, more like Galactus than the other heralds. Um, and he, I believe he's actually considered the strongest of the heralds, and is one of the few heralds that actually, you know, successfully, like, they all turned on Galactus, but, like, he's the one who successfully broke out, and it was like, stop. Um, so the, so the surfer's abilities of, like, you know, high-speed travel, interdimensional travel, energy manipulation, um, basically to get into the analysis here, because I can't really, I don't really can't remember too many, like, examples of the Silver Surfer. Look, you gotta be, a, you gotta be, like, a Silver Surfer fan to really know anything about the guy. He's one of those guys. He's, like, Daredevil. Like, or, or Dr. Fate or something. Like, you have to read his books. And I'm sorry, and I, I didn't, I did a very base level information, you know, look when I did this. But let's just get into the analysis here. Um, so, I think... Overall, in terms of, like, power, I think Dr. Manhattan has more so. I don't want to say that it's, like, infinitely more or anything, but I think he is, you know, higher on the power spectrum than Silver Surfer is. Um, I don't really know how close it would be, particularly. This would involve a lot of math, probably, but I think that, you know, Silver Surfer's powers are... In a similar vein, but not, you know, probably not to the extent that Manhattan's are. Um, again, I don't think it's, like, such a colossal difference that it would literally determine the fight but in and of itself, ignoring all other factors, but I think that it it, it is, you know, noticeable. It's a palpable difference. Um, Surfer, however, has the one advantage being that Manhattan's weakness to tachyon energy. Now, would that come into play so immediately? Like, would Surfer know how to do that? Well, I believe they're both, like, telepathic to a degree, aren't they? So, I think that would be easy to discover. Um, that's basically the determining factor. I think... If that comes into play, if, if the Tachyon energy weakness comes into play, Surfer has a chance to win. Otherwise, I think it goes to Dr. Manhattan. Um, again, I'm not saying, like, Manhattan's gonna snap his fingers and Surfer is just gonna be erased from existence. I think it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be an actual fight that technically could go either way. But if that Tachyon weakness is, you know, 
super exploitable and super usable, then I think Surfer probably takes it. Otherwise, Manhattan takes it. Anyway, Verblenja95, see ya.